Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you ever so much for giving up a, a day. Some of you who've come down, I think, from uh, out of London, came down yesterday. Thank you very, very much for giving up a, a day or more to help in this really unique uh, process to help Britain be the first country in the world to develop what I call an eco-constitution, an environmental constitution that will bind not just this government, but all future governments. And that is a big uh, decision uh, for the country to take. It's one that needs to involve, obviously, all political parties and parliament, but it's absolutely vital that it involves the public uh, as well. And the fact that out of the 170 people that we invited, 160 of you have come here through the regional discussions and now uh, for this day, I think is a real testimony to your commitment, but also to the nature of the uh, issue. Uh, I'll be joined a bit later by representatives of the TUC, the CBI, the National Consumer Council, and a, a special welcome to my colleague, Ian Pearson, who's just, well, I shouldn't, I have to admit, he did fly from New York, but I don't know how else he could have flown in. He's spent the last week negotiating with uh, the government of Zimbabwe, among others, about the Commission on Sustainable Development. So I think this will be light relief by comparison to what you've been doing uh, over the last uh, week. I just want to use my time, which is 12 or 13 minutes, to talk about some of the nature of the challenge we face, the international action that we are taking, because even going around the tables over the last five to 10 minutes, people want to know not just what we can do, but that other countries are gonna match it. On a lot of the screens, I've seen mention of the United States and what they're doing. But then thirdly, to talk a bit about uh, what we can do at home government to get its own house in order, business to play its part, and again, I've seen quite a lot of mentions on the computer screens, are we sure that business is going to play its part, and then the right incentives for individuals to make a commitment uh, to. I just want to start off with uh, the basics. I, I got a D in A-level physics, so um, my, don't take it from me, this science is taken from people who are better at science uh, than I am, and I'm delighted that Brian Hosking, who's a professor at the University of Reading is here if I, if I get into hot water. But I think it's important to start by saying the Earth is getting hotter because of a pretty simple scientific process. It was discovered in the 1890s by a Swedish uh, scientist, Arrhenius, and he called it the greenhouse effect. And anyone who's got a greenhouse or can imagine what a greenhouse does, it traps the heat from the sun close to the Earth's uh, surface. And so that's why I find it useful just to start with this basic uh, explanation so that we all at least have some idea uh, of what we're talking about. If there wasn't any greenhouse effect, then the Earth would be uninhabitable. We need to keep some of the heat from the uh, sun close to the Earth's surface, otherwise you have an ice age. But we need to have, uh, but, but if you have too much, you have warming, and that is the danger that we uh, face at the moment. As we have uh, polluted the atmosphere over the last 150 years, above all through carbon dioxide, the, uh, if you like, the film uh, of pollution close to the Earth's surface is now trapping more of the heat that's re reflected back from the Earth's uh, surface. What evidence do we have that warming is going on? There are some natural cycles that uh, occur which uh, affect the, 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 heat, the heat and the average temperature, but look at the last 30 or 40 years. Of the 0.7 degrees centigrade increase in the average temperature close to the Earth's surface over the last uh, 100 years, 0.4 degrees has happened in the last 30 years. So we're seeing an acceleration in the uh, warming that is uh, going on. We're also seeing uh, more extreme weather events, which is something that I will come back to uh, in a moment. So the, the basic science, which was repeated by the International Panel on Climate Change, 2,500 scientists coming together around the world recently. And I think the effects, many of us will have seen it on television or in the newspapers. You see um, the glaciers retreating, in all but a very small percentage of glaciers retreating. And you see uh, remarkable uh, pictures uh, that show the nature of the retreat of the ice, the, the warming of the uh, Earth. And this is perhaps my, the most stunning statistic that I've seen over the last um, year since I've been in the job as Secretary of State for the Environment. The Thames Barrier was built to protect London from flooding. In the first six years that the Thames Barrier was built, it was raised three times, between 1981 and 1987. In the last six years, it's been raised 56 times. So even in our own country, 
even if you don't have to believe that all of that is to do with climate change, because it's probable that all of it isn't to do with climate change. But that is a striking demonstration that even in our own country, we're seeing big change in the nature of the weather. Mark Twain once said, everyone talks about the weather, but no one does anything about it. But actually, through our actions globally, we are doing something about the weather. And of course, it's some of the poorest people in the poorest parts of the world who are going to be most affected. We can build a Thames barrier. We can even reinforce the Thames barrier. But there are parts of the world where they don't have that uh, luxury. The um, following slide just gives some sense of the changes. I, I think all these slides are going to be distributed to you and certainly will be available on the website. And it isn't, I haven't got time to go through all of this in one uh, go. But I do just want to make two points about this uh, slide. The first is that you'll hear a lot of talk today about one degrees, two degrees, three degrees centigrade change in the Earth's surface. And that might not sound like a lot. We might think, I don't know what the temperature is today, 16 or 17 degrees, we might think it's quite nice to have 20 degrees. An average change of this magnitude, 0 to 5 degrees, is the same difference as between now and the last ice age. The average temperature in the last ice age was 5 degrees colder than it is today. So the small numbers that we're talking about, 1, 2, 3 degrees, are very, very big in terms of our uh, climate. The second thing I want to say about this slide is the fourth row along. It's not just that the average temperature is rising, but we're having more erratic weather uh, events. And that obviously puts a huge burden, especially on the poorest countries in the world. It's an incredible irony that the people who've done least to cause the pollution, those in the poorest, least developed parts of the world, are going to suffer the greatest. The most striking statistic for me, at the moment, the amount of uh, carbon dioxide we've already emitted means there's more or less a 40% chance of a 2 degrees centigrade change in the average temperature at the Earth's surface. Even at 2 degrees, you're talking about 40 to 60 million malaria cases in Africa alone. So we are taking risks, big risks, with our uh, climate, and that will have human effects. I don't know how many of you have seen the Al Gore film, um, The Inconvenient uh, Truth, but the subtitle is A Planetary Emergency. And in a way, I was thinking about this. In a way, that slightly, it makes it sound like it's about the planet, but not about people. In fact, many of the consequences we're talking about are about humanitarian emergencies, not just planetary emergencies. This is about us and the extent to which we're willing to tolerate levels of suffering, not just for ourselves and levels of cost, but for others in other parts of the world. So that's just the nature of the science that I just wanted to start with. The challenge is now agreed upon by scientists. That top red line shows the amount of uh, carbon dioxide or its equivalent in the atmosphere if we carry on as we are. At the moment, the scientists talk in terms of parts per million. 425 parts per million of, of the atmosphere is uh, made up of uh, greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide or its equivalent. It's rising by about two parts per million per year. And essentially, we are already at the point where we're heading for a 50% chance of a 2 degrees centigrade change in the average temperature of the Earth's surface. If we carry on as we are, by mid-century, it'll be a better than evens chance of a 3 degrees centigrade change. And we've got to find a way of getting off that red line down into the lower uh, black lines, below 550 parts per million, between 550 and 450. And that requires big cuts in the level of emissions from countries like ours. That's why we're talking about a 60% reduction for this country, at least. Uh, and it requires all in r rich countries to participate in that. But it will also require efforts from the poorer countries as well, different kind of effort, which maybe we can discuss in the course uh, of the day.